We all love indulging in our favorite foods, but have you ever stopped to think about what goes into making them? From the chemicals used to preserve and flavor processed snacks to the cruel treatment of animals in factory farms, the food industry can be a shocking and disturbing place. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the production processes of some popular foods and expose the often hidden ingredients and practices that may make you think twice before reaching for them in the grocery store. Brace yourself, this video may just gross you out a little, or maybe even a lot. These are 20 foods you'll never buy again after you know how they are made. Number 20. McDonald's Burgers this is how McDonald's perfect burgers are actually made versus how you think they were made. For a while, there was a rumor going around that the patties in McDonald's hamburgers were made with worm meat. Some people even said that they got their burger meat from a company called 100% Beef, allowing them to make the bold claim that their patties were 100% beef. But the truth is much less gross. You might be more than happy to carry on eating McDonald's burgers, with moderation of course, when you learn that their burger meat is, in fact, beef. According to the U.S. McDonald's website, they source their beef from United States ranchers, and some of it even comes from Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. They even named one of their suppliers, so you can enjoy peace of mind knowing they're not lying. Lopez Foods in Oklahoma has been supplying McDonald's restaurants with beef, pork, and chicken since the late 60s. Once the beef is received, it's checked over to ensure there are no bones in it, and then it's put through a meat grinder before machines shape the resultant minced meat into patties. They're then flash frozen, put in bags, and shipped off to restaurants. McDonald's says their patties are 100% beef and made with beef, salt, pepper, and nothing else. Not even preservatives, additives, or fillers. Number 19. Shredded Cheese and Grated Parmesan Many cheese lovers were absolutely shook when they realized cheese companies were using cellulose in their cheese products. It's not even cheese you're eating on your pasta, it's wood pulp. And many of us were even more shocked to learn that it was absolutely legal. The only reason we took much notice of it was that the FDA was investigating Castle Cheese Incorporated, a company from Pennsylvania that had improperly labeled its cheese and used a combination of cellulose and cheap cheddar cheese in its Parmesan products. According to the American Cheese Society's executive director, Nora Weiser, cellulose is found in shredded cheese varieties where it's used as an anti-caking agent. It keeps the grated cheese cheese from clumping together and is a legal food-grade additive. The FDA allows cheese products to contain up to 4% cellulose, which means every time you eat your favorite pasta dish, 4% of the parmesan you put on top could be nothing more than wood pulp. It's absurd. Cellulose has actually been quite a popular food additive since the 1970s when consumers wanted more fiber in their diets. See, I don't know about you, but I think I'd be choosing products with whole wheat as fiber as opposed to, well, wood. Number 18. Packaged Bread Has there ever been a more beautiful thing than sliced bread? You just can't beat it. It's sensational for sandwiches, toast, croutons, crumbs the list goes on. But what you might have noticed is that commercially produced bread lasts far longer than anything you make at home. According to some sources, the shelf life of commercially made bread is much longer because they put L-cysteine in it. L-cysteine doesn't sound all that ominous. It is an entirely natural product and you can find it in your meat, dairy products, and even vegetables. But it's added to bread and its source is shocking. It's synthesized from human hair. Your bread has human hair. Let that sink in. Hair salons in China are among the most common sources of L-cysteine in products. The hair clippings are gathered, dissolved into an acid, and the L-cysteine is removed and sold to commercial bakeries. Sometimes it also comes from duck feathers, cow horns, and pig bristles. Many fast food outlets have said they use it, but fortunately, the bread from McDonald's contains fully synthetic L-cysteine, which means they have haven't raided hair salons to make their buns last longer. Number 17. Enhanced Chicken and Beef 
The next time you purchase chicken and beef from your local grocery store with brined or enhanced on the packaging, pay attention to the weight. Some of that weight is nothing more than a salt water solution and a few seasonings. And you're paying extra for it to be there. It's actually not uncommon for food processors to plump their meat by injecting it with salt water. In fact, it's an industry standard. But why do they do it? Well, the reasoning behind it is that it'll make your chicken or beef fresher and juicier. After all, who wants to tuck into a dry bit of meat? Everyone would blame your cooking. The problem is just how much your average chicken breast is being plumped. Some studies have found that a chicken's weight can be plumped up with salt water solutions by as much as 30%. Every year, consumers spend millions of dollars on salt water rather than chicken. Now, at first, processors were just adding saline to keep the poultry moist, but they realized it didn't really help with the flavor. So they started adding forms of sugar like corn syrup as well as lemon concentrates and broths. To help the chicken hold on to that water during shipping, they also added sodium phosphate to bind it. But as this would stop them from being able to claim a product was low sodium, they used potassium phosphate. They then encountered another problem. Potassium phosphate tastes bitter. So what do they do? They add more natural flavors. Look, I'm not saying that every piece of chicken you buy will have all these fillers and additives, but it's worth keeping in mind that there's often more than just chicken in your chicken. Number 16. Jelly Beans Jelly beans are a delicious treat for young and old, allegedly. We're often told not to eat too many of them because of their high sugar content. But there's another reason why you might stop yourself from throwing a handful in your mouth. There are bugs in them. It's not as gross as it sounds, though. You aren't gonna bite into a jelly bean and find a spider leg. The shiny coating on the outside is often shellac, and this is a resin that the female lac bug secretes when it drinks tree sap. They come from Thailand and India and deposit their shellac onto branches and twigs. It's then harvested, processed into flakes, dissolved in ethanol, and sprayed onto food products like jelly beans. Sometimes it even replaces the wax on apples and is used in non-edible goods like like hardwood flooring products to make them shiny. Obviously, this is bad news for vegans or vegetarians. Shellac is an animal byproduct and is not typically listed as bug juices on food and product packaging. Instead, you might see it listed as E904. If you're a vegetarian who's been tucking into the occasional bag of jelly beans, you may want to rethink your choices. Number 15. Chewing Gum there's a whole list of ingredients you might not have realized are present in your average stick of gum. Like sheep's wool, for example. Did you know you're chewing part of a sheep? Okay, so it's not actually as gross as it sounds. Some chewing gum contains lanolin, which is a type of waxy secretion from the sebaceous glands of sheep. They use lanolin to make their wool waterproof, and it's quite a popular ingredient in skincare products. However, it's often found in chewing gum because it gives it the necessary chewiness. You might not find this listed in the ingredients, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Most chewing gum products also contain flavors, sweeteners, a gum base, and soft. The gum base can sometimes come from the latex sap of the sapodilla tree, but it might also come from natural resin, food-grade agar, and other sources. And because we're all about synthetic technology these days, synthetic rubbers are often used to form the gum base of chewing gums, such as synthetic resin, polyethylene, and glycerol esters of wood or gum resin. But before you vow to never eat chewing gum again, know that it can sometimes have some medicinal functions. You can buy chewy analgesics, antacids, and even gum products to help you quit smoking, provide nutrition, and prevent tooth decay. Number 14. Packaged Meat Browse the meat fridge of your local grocery store and tell me which meat product you'd prefer to buy. One with dark brown raw meat or one with fresh looking red meat. Yeah, you'd go for the fresh looking meat, right? Well, there's nothing to say it's actually any fresher than the brown meat. It just might contain carbon monoxide. Many meat producers put a supposed harmless dose of carbon monoxide onto meat products to make them look red for more than 20 days. But if you were to peer into the cabinetry of your local butcher, you'd find that 
that the meat in there, which typically doesn't contain carbon monoxide, only stays red looking for a few days. Consumers want their meat to look fresh, so producers are answering the call with this unusual addition. The problem is that even rotting and unsafe meat can look like it's just been sliced off a cattle beast. It's not until consumers open the packaging that they realize their meat doesn't smell as it should. Calsec, a small company in Kalamazoo, Michigan, has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars fighting food regulators and meat producers over their use of carbon monoxide. They say that consumers who make their purchasing decisions based on color will be fooled into buying old or spoiled meat. Calsec uses natural colorings, herbs, and spices, including a rosemary extract, to keep meat looking red for about half as long as meat infused with carbon monoxide. Number 13. Orange Juice Make orange juice at home and it's easy peasy orange squeezy. You grab some oranges, squeeze them, and drink them. That's it. You might think that big corporations do the same when making their orange juice, but on a much larger scale. But they don't. At least the majority of them don't. Sure, some orange juice manufacturers actually use oranges, so that's a good start. But that's not always all you'll find in your average bottle or carton. Many companies will store their orange juice in huge vats and remove all the oxygen to help it last longer. Without oxygen, it won't spoil for at least a year. But when you remove the oxygen, you're also removing the actual orange flavor. So what do they do? They add flavor packs. Flavor packs are made from chemicals used in orange essence and oils. The same flavor packs you might find used in perfumes, basically. They're essentially artificial flavors to make your orange juice taste like orange juice again. So if you have an orange tree, put it to good use. At least you'll know that the orange juice you drink is actually orange and nothing else. Number 12. Canned Tomatoes Look, I'll be the first to admit that I've got more than a few cans of tomatoes in my pantry. They're so convenient for pasta dishes, but what you're about to learn will probably have you catapulting them into the trash. And it actually has nothing to do with the tomatoes. They're just the innocent victim in all this. It's all about the packaging. Many cans have a resin that's believed to leach the toxic chemical known as bisphenol A, or BPA, into the food the can contains. And as tomatoes are so acidic, the rate of it leaching into the food can be much faster. Many health problems can be linked to BPA chemical exposure, such as hormonal disruption, malformation of organs, sperm defects, and an increased rate of mental disabilities. The Centers for Disease Control also conducted a survey that found detectable levels of BPA in around 93% of urine samples from people aged 6 and over. Most experts don't seem to think there would be enough BPA in the average canned food to increase the risk of disease but it's definitely food for thought. Might be worth preserving your own tomatoes and using glass jars instead. Number 11. Worcestershire sauce. Ah, yes, the old wash your sister sauce, or if you can speak the English language perfectly, Worcestershire sauce. Wor Worcestershire? Worcestershire? <laughs> Clearly, I can't speak the English language perfectly. It's a favorite, that's for sure. You can use it in stir fries, marinades, sauces, meat dishes, salads, the list goes on. I love it on burgers. There's nearly nothing it doesn't taste nice with, except for desserts, of course. But the way it's made, at least the Lee and Perrins variety, will surprise you. Or it won't. I, I don't know you. Lee and Perrins have been making this classic sauce for nearly two centuries. Chemists John Wheelie Lee and William Henry Perrins started dabbling in the sauce's creation in 1835, and it was an utter failure. It tasted awful. So they left their sauce in their basement, left it alone, and returned to it a few years later. They tasted it again, and surprisingly, it tasted good. Almost like the aging process had done it well. And that was that. The secret to their success was letting the ingredients mature. Such as molasses, malt vinegar, spirit vinegar, garlic, red onions, anchovies, and tamarind. And even today, they follow a similar process. Their Worcestershire sauce ingredients sit maturing in barrels for several months until they're used in the actual sauce. 
Whole garlic cloves will sit to pickle in malt vinegar for a year and a half, while whole red onions will pickle for 9 or 10 months. Even the anchovies are aged. They'll sit in 200 kilograms of salt for two years to bring out the best flavor. Number 10. Pringles you might think the most shocking thing about your average can of Pringles is how you can never seem to fit your fist in the can to grab the last few chips. But the real shocking thing is just how bad they are for you and how they're not even really potato chips. The Pringles company wanted to avoid paying taxes for luxury foods, so they argued that the potato content of their chips was so low that they technically weren't potato chips. Instead, they're made out of rice, wheat, corn, and potato flakes. The slurry mixture is then pressed into a shape, rolled into a sheet, and cut into the shapes that fit so beautifully inside that frustratingly narrow tube. Once they're cut, they're curved, put into boiling oil, dried, and sprayed with powdered flavors. Yeah, nothing about any of that screams wholesome potato chip. They even stack together. Mm. And then there are the cancer-causing chemicals. Sorry, what? Yeah, I mean, it's not actually intentionally added, but it's there nonetheless. Acrylamide is a cancer-causing chemical that's created when foods rich in carbohydrates are fried, baked, roasted, or toasted at high temperatures. Many foods, not just potatoes, contain acrylamide when cooked at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or above. So, you'll find it in potato chips and french fries, but also in various processed snacks, roasted breakfast cereals, bread crusts, etc. So, not being potatoes is the least of your worries when eating Pringles. Number 9. Can Mushrooms we all eat bugs. Most of us eat them unintentionally, but we eat them all the same. The FDA has always said that we should allow for at least a few of them in our packaged foods. But most of us are eating up to two pounds a year of bugs like mites, maggots, and flies. But you'll probably never buy a can of cherries or mushrooms again when you learn just how many bugs can be present within them. According to the FDA, 5% of canned maraschino cherries in brine can be contaminated by maggots. Your average canned fruit juice product can also have at least one maggot for every 250 milliliters of juice. That's not that much juice. And then there are canned mushrooms. They're convenient, kind of tasty, and cheap. But there are also at least 20 or more maggots in any can of any size per 100 grams. So, in every three and a half ounce can of mushrooms, there might be up to 19 maggots and 74 mites. The good news is that it's unlikely to be harmful for you to eat these bugs. Maggots are considered to be safe to eat, and some people even weirdly call them a superfood. Number 8. Bacon Alright, look, I'm not gonna ruin bacon for you. Okay, I lied, I totally am. It's just really not that good for you, and deep down, you know that. Bacon is traditionally made from pork and goes through a curing process involving being soaked in nitrates, salt, and sometimes sugar. Sometimes it's also smoked after being cured. Both curing and smoking are preservation methods and also ensure bacon keeps its coloring and taste. But of course, it makes the bacon high in salt since salt is used in the curing process. When you eat food high in salt, you might be at an increased risk of stomach cancer and high blood pressure. Bacon is also high in fat, but everything in moderation, am I right? The real problem lies in the additives from the processing, such as nitrites and nitrates. When they're cooked at high heat, they form nitrosamine compounds, which are carcinogens. Fortunately, some bacon processors now add orthorbic acid and vitamin C, both of which might reduce the nitrosamine content. But we're not gonna take all the joy out of bacon. It contains high-quality animal protein a whole heap of vitamins like B1, B2, and B12, selenium, phosphorus, potassium, iron, zinc, and magnesium. Number 7. Beer this is absolutely wild, but your beer might contain fish. Sure, it also includes all those common ingredients like hops, water, barley, and malt, but you probably wouldn't see fish swim bladder on your average beer bottle. It has a fancier name, Isenglass, but 
it's still a piece of fish, and it's been used in beer creation since the 19th century. Beer brewers use the swim bladder to clarify the beer. It doesn't normally change the flavor or composition of the beer all that much, but it ensures that it's clear, brightly colored, and attractive for beer drinkers. Without it, the beer might be a little murky. But this means that beer made by brewers who use Isinglass is not vegan-friendly. And even non-vegans are bound to be a little creeped out to learn that their favorite beer is being filtered through a dead fish. The good news is that breweries are changing their ways. Many are now steering away from fining agents, and some are coming up with less fishy alternatives. Number 6. Hot Dogs can you really say you've been to a sports game, motorsport race, or carnival unless you've devoured a hot dog? I say no, but it might not be on your must-have list when you learn a little bit more about them. Probably the grossest thing you'll learn about hot dogs is what that meat actually is. It's pretty vague, but it's mostly emulsified meat trimmings. That means it can be a random mix of blood, skin, liver, head meat, muscle trimmings, and basically everything you wouldn't sell in the grocery store. Somehow, when they're all mixed together, they're delicious, and that's infuriating. But if the mystery meat doesn't concern you, the salt content just might. Just one hot dog might contain around a quarter of your recommended daily intake of salt. They're also high in fat, so if you eat lots of them, you might be at an increased risk of illnesses like cancer, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes. Don't believe me? The studies aren't pretty. One carried out at the University of Michigan found that one hot dog has the potential to take 36 minutes off your life. I think I'll just order the salad, and then try to find as many sources as I can to refute that so I can feel okay again. Number 5. Energy Drinks Energy drinks are beautiful go-go juices. When you want a go-go, you knock back one of these bad boys and you're in full power mode. But it doesn't take a genius to work out that we should be drinking water instead. The average energy drink has caffeine, sugar, additives, and legal stimulants like L-carnitine, guarana, and taurine. People drink them to be more alert and attentive and to enjoy more energy. But when you drink them, you might instead notice an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. According to the CDC, nearly 1,500 teenagers between the ages of 12 and 17 presented to the emergency room in 2011 for energy drink-related emergencies. They can present many dangers, like dehydration when there's not enough water in your body, and anxiety where you feel jittery and nervous. Some people also experience insomnia, which is when you can't sleep. But perhaps one of the most severe dangers associated with energy drinks is heart complications. Some people have experienced irregular heartbeat and heart failure after drinking energy drinks. But it's not just teens that energy drinks are bad for, none of us should be drinking them. They contain huge amounts of sugar and unnecessary calories, and many are providing you with far more caffeine than you need. Number 4. Red Products what if I told you that you're eating bugs every time you eat something red, aside from natural products like apples? Maybe shock and horror. Well, many food producers use red food colorings made from carmen, which is actually a crushed up bug. Carmen is made from cochineal insects, which are bugs from Latin America that live on cacti. They're primarily farmed in Peru, and we harvest millions of cochineal insects annually to produce red coloring for our food, such as soft drinks, donuts, yogurt, and ice cream. It's also found in cosmetics like lipstick. The reason why many people don't know they're eating bugs is that they're not really listed on food packaging. I mean, would you really buy a food product if bugs was on the list of ingredients? Yeah, probably not. Instead, manufacturers listed as Carmine, E120, Crimson Lake, or Natural Red 4. Yeah, those are much nicer names. But nice name or not, you're still eating bugs. Small, 0.2-inch wingless female bugs are brushed off prickly pear cacti, dried, and filtered to remove insect parts. They are then added to food to give it its red coloring. But because demand is rising and Peru can only find so many bugs, some companies are opting to use alternative colorings to keep costs low. An excellent vegan alternative is lycopene, which is a tomato-based extract. 
Number 3. Blue Cheese Blue cheese. You either love it or hate it. It's moldy, and the best blue cheese has blue and green mold and a cream or white looking body. Because it's already moldy, it's actually quite hard to tell if it's gone bad. Typically, you can tell that blue cheese has gone off by growths that look different from the intended mold. Aside from a high risk of eating mold that shouldn't be there, you should consume blue cheese in moderation for other reasons. It's very high in calories. There are at least 99 calories in a single ounce of blue cheese, and if you're on a weight loss journey, you should not be in a hurry to use it as a salad topper. Blue cheese is also high in cholesterol, with 5 grams of saturated fat per serving. There are also 21 milligrams of dietary cholesterol in each ounce, and we should be having no more than 300 milligrams per day. And if you were eating blue cheese for extra calcium, perhaps choose another dairy product. It has far less calcium than other dairy products, with just 150 milligrams per ounce compared to 300 to 450 milligrams in a cup of reduced fat milk or yogurt. Number 2. Apple Juice Apples equals good, arsenic equals bad. As we know, an apple a day theoretically keeps the doctors away, and it's probably more effective if you throw them. And arsenic is, well, poison. It can kill you quickly or slowly, depending on the dose. Arsenic occurs naturally in minerals, so it's not overly shocking to learn that small amounts of it can be found in apple juice. But what about large amounts? According to Dr. Oz, we might be drinking apple juice with 10 parts per billion of arsenic. And that shocked many people, but that's the safe limit for arsenic in drinking water. But the FDA has now carried out some testing to determine how much arsenic in apple juice is safe. Previously, they said that 23 parts per billion was the level we should be concerned about for inorganic arsenic in apple juice. However, based on a new risk assessment and cancer, they've lowered it to 10 parts per billion. They believe this low amount is achievable by manufacturers with good manufacturing practices. Number 1. Vanilla Flavored Products there are a few things as satisfying as tucking into a delicious bowl of vanilla ice cream after dinner, but you might be rethinking your ice cream flavor choice when you learn that the vanilla might be coming from beaver butts. Be be beaver butts. A key ingredient in many vanilla flavored products is castorum, which originates from beaver castor sacs. These are scent glands between the base of the tail and the pelvis. and beavers produce the castorum to mark their territory. What I'd like to know is, who was the first person to think it was a good idea to taste that butt goo? Did someone really dip a finger in it and give it a taste test? Doesn't bear thinking about. The worst part is that we might not know we're even eating it, since it's often listed as natural flavoring. Fortunately, not all vanilla-flavored goods use beaver butt goo. High quality goods tend to use real vanilla extract, which isn't from beaver bums. I won't be able to help but think about fish when drinking beer or eating bugs when I eat red candy. It's almost like we can't trust anything manufactured that we eat. Do you eat any of these products often? Has learning about them put you off from eating them anymore? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time. Alright, I'm gonna go try and forget.